Why does being overwhelmed with happiness seem to hasten its salvation once you achieve the goal you pursued to achieve success? What enables you to log into the Creator who is the main Creator, since He may currently be your friend, or He may turn into an enemy hostile to you? The detailed answer lies in understanding how the coup occurred and the possibility of it. If you effectively exploit the ability of massage and invest in its development, there, hope will be a loyal ally, supporting you towards success and service experience. On the other hand, if you allow warriors, using intelligence effectively, partnering with your ally in achieving your goals and ideas is what attracts you, and the understanding and intelligence of the driver is the primary solution to that, I end the book Positive Intelligence, Shurz at SH, explains. All your stress and unhappiness are the result of opponents in your mind, harmful thought patterns that he calls sabotaging patterns, which are negative patterns of thinking, which shape your personality, and therefore your behavior and actions, they disturb your mood and affect the way you experience life. In today's summary of the book Positive Intelligence, we will shed light on the ten destructive patterns, as the author calls them, then the fifth techniques contained in the wise part of your brain, which enable you to confront the tenth saboteurs, and we will conclude with a simple or practical exercise to apply everything you will learn in this summary. Then get ready to enjoy a journey into the world of positive intelligence and explore the keys to change. Put your earphones on and focus with me. How does your brain hinder your happiness and success? Stress comes from harmful thought processes that affect our ability to act and think rationally and reasoning processes. At one point in our lives, these were survival mechanisms, but in adulthood, they hinder progress and success in every aspect of our lives. As we said, our brains can either work for us or work for us when they work for us. This is because the part that works for survival is the one that is in control, and this part of the brain is responsible for protecting us from dangers that threaten our safety during childhood by helping us identify threats. Avoiding it for example, may protect us during childhood by alerting us that high places may be dangerous in order to protect us from the threat of falling. This type of protection was necessary to ensure our safety and survival in unfamiliar and dangerous circumstances, but in adulthood, as the context of our lives changes, the survival brain does more harm than good, continuing to amplify threats. It pushed us into states of extreme stress in situations that no longer constitute a real threat, a state that can be overcome if we use the other part of the brain, the part that helps us learn and develop rather than just survive, and in adulthood, the survival brain manifests itself in the form of different behaviors and mental patterns. These patterns are destructive. IT is a type of behavior or trait that the brain tends to adopt to deal with stress in unhealthy ways. Because the brain convinces us that these behaviors are the only way to survive and cope with stress. Sham explains that there are a total of 10 sabotaging patterns, the judge or critic, the overenthusiastic achiever, the controller, the auditor, the distractor, the avoidant, the overrational, the pathological, the overcautious, and the victim. The writer says that the first saboteur type, the judge or critic, differs from the other nine, as he is considered to some extent to be their manager. We will discuss the judge first, then collect the other nine objectively, and talk about them in detail. The most powerful saboteurs, the judge or critic, the critic is the saboteur style that most dominates the majority of people. He acts as a leader for others. He criticizes you and criticizes others. He criticizes your circumstances and looks for flaws. In all these aspects, 
while it also makes you think that you are just being rational and trying to fix your own faults or the faults of others. Ah, self-criticism by telling you that you're not good enough and that if you allow yourself to be satisfied with where you are, you'll stop improving and you'll never be good enough, telling you that you have to suffer to make yourself better and that happiness is just laziness, these types of self-judgments can be exacerbated by toxic productivity or cultural bias, members overvalue work and professional accomplishments, demonize comfort, and glorify suffering. While this mindset may lead to greater professional success, it has been shown to be detrimental to mental health and work-life balance. It can also negatively affect your physical health. The flaws you point out in others are the same flaws you see in yourself, even if you don't realize it. This indicates that judging others not only negatively affects them and your relationship with them, but it also affects your self-image and happiness. Be why criticizing your circumstances, he makes you countless. He puts a condition on your happiness, tells you that you can only be happy when a certain event occurs in the future, and also moves the goalposts every time you get close to the thing that is supposed to make you happy. He will tell you that you will not be happy until you get a job with a salary of 100000 for example. And when you finally get that job, now, he focuses again on a future event that must happen before you can be happy, like getting a luxurious vacation home or a $500,000 job, the other nine sabotaging patterns. We will mention here the characteristics of the person led by this sabotaging pattern. If you are dominated by these traits, know that this pattern is what drives your thinking and behavior. We will start with the critical saboteurs, as some saboteurs are characterized by a tendency to be overly critical and are demanding of themselves and others. By meeting their expectations, the overachiever is driven to prove himself by achieving personal accomplishments to feel good about himself. He is more concerned with how others view him than with staying true to himself, and he changes his behavior and identity based on what he thinks others will value rather than what he himself values. A team may be a source of competition. He often tends to give priority to work at the expense of other aspects of his life, and because of his perception that his feelings distract him from work, he neglects his emotions and finds it difficult to express them in front of others, given that he appears to be successful in his field. Others often find themselves inspired to emulate them, and they should focus on achieving success as the key. To develop themselves, this saboteur feeds on the cognitive fallacy which is the expansion of positive achievements, which only focuses on excelling in achievements, which makes them exceed their own achievements, and never feel satisfied with what they have done, and this is very similar to the lathe and the first critic. The controller feels the need to control his circumstances and others, competes or challenges others in order to communicate with them, and has difficulty understanding why people respond negatively. For this approach, he feels upset and anxious when he cannot control the situation. He believes that others also wish to be under his control. Believes that others will not achieve much if left to themselves. He has difficulty accepting the orders of others and pushes people to exceed their limits. Others feel resentment and suffocation due to excessive control on his part, and this saboteur feeds on the cognitive fallacy, which is the belief that you are responsible and in control of everything in your life and the lives of those around you. This leads to feeling that you are personally responsible for everyone's success and life, making you resentful of others when they resist your attempts to control them. This pattern is also fueled by privilege or the belief that certain rules, such as the rule that says others should do what you say, must that applies to others, but not to you. 
An auditor is a demanding person who sets high standards for himself and how to do things the right way. They are very critical of others when they do not adhere to these standards, but they are also very sensitive to criticism from others. They say they are completely intolerant of mistakes and show strictness in their thinking and style. Others may resent them because they seem arrogant, difficult, and domineering. This saboteur feeds on the fallacy of personalization that makes you, just as in the fallacy of control, make you believe that you are responsible for matters that are completely outside your control, and that is why you find the auditor adhering to certain qualities and behaviors, believing that if he does not follow these qualities and behaviors, bad things will happen. Thy fallacy causes a strong feeling of blame, which makes you blame yourself for not preventing negative events, even if they were unexpected and beyond your control. It also makes you take things very personally. An extreme form of thy fallacy is rejection-sensitive disorder, which is an extreme reaction to criticism. It even makes you feel his body pain sometimes. Next, We'll move on to distraction saboteurs, who are particularly prone to trying to distract you from your problems and negative emotions, making you appear distant and disconnected from others. Diaspora They are saboteurs who seek fun and cannot be satisfied with what they have. They tend to multitask and have many projects at once, but are easily distracted from tasks and need constant stress in their lives. They have difficulty thinking about their feelings, fear negative feelings and loss of opportunities, use pleasure seeking to avoid living on guard and dealing with their feelings or problems. Others may have difficulty communicating with them because they avoid these things. IT can be difficult to keep up with their changing needs and interests. The cognitive fallacy that this saboteur feeds on is the belief that it is possible to perform several tasks at the same time with the same level of focus and attention. Studies have shown that this is not actually possible and trying to do so reduces your efficiency and makes you busier, which may actually be attractive to this saboteur as he can avoid thinking about his problems and emotions. The avoidant focuses disproportionately on the positive in order to avoid the negative. They avoid any kind of clash or conflict, and it is difficult for them to first maintain healthy boundaries with others. I choose and we let the problem fester, especially if the confrontation might upset someone else. They are making a great effort to find a peaceful balance in their lives and are worried about losing it. They suppress their negative feelings in order to keep the peace, and this can prevent them from forming deep connections with others, as others often feel that they cannot trust the avoidant to be honest about their feelings. The avoidant feeds on the fallacy of overestimating perceived threats. The fear of not being able to deal effectively with negative situations leads to avoiding those situations as much as possible, suppressing negative feelings, and focusing only on the positive. IT can also lead to avoiding or postponing unwanted tasks, which studies have shown. It is not necessarily the result of poor time management or a lack of will, but rather it could be the result of an inability to control the emotions associated with those tasks. Hyperrationalism relies on a completely objective and rational approach to every aspect of life. They view emotions as barriers to productivity and objectivity. They tend to be suspicious and argumentative and are often genius or intelligent, but they are arrogant and attach their value to their intelligence and objectivity. They feel frustrated and contemptuous of other people's feelings and often feel lonely and as if no one can understand them. Their analytical approach to interpersonal relationships can lead them into Saturnian relationships and can even make others feel intimidated. This saboteur is fueled by a lack of emotional intelligence. 
The belief that emotional thinking and rational thinking are contradictory is incorrect. Ignoring emotions can lead to ignoring important information for the general context. The last three saboteurs are the fearful or paranoid, as they operate from a feeling of fear, which drains their energy and makes them focus on their problems and worries. Patients strive to gain the approval of others through help and praise, and usually find it difficult to express their personal needs clearly. Instead, they try to meet those needs by offering help and expecting others to reward them in the same way. When they don't get this response, they may feel resentful. Their excessive preoccupation with helping others may lead to stress and exhaustion and may make others rely heavily on this help or even exploit them. A common behavior of patients is their attempt to make everyone happy and satisfy them, even at the expense of their own happiness and health, which may be the result of low self-confidence and fear of being considered selfish or of facing negative consequences. When he refuses to help others, or when he tells him. Excessive Caution This style thrives on catastrophizing, where they always assume that the worst will happen, and catastrophizing can sometimes appear as a way to mitigate the effects of a negative incident by preparing yourself for the worst outcome. But the worst outcomes are usually unlikely, and the stress or anxiety that results from catastrophizing can be more symptomatic than the negative event itself. The victim uses emotions and feelings of persecution to attract the attention of others when faced with pressures and challenges. They tend to indulge in negative emotions such as depression and apathy. They feel that they are not understood by others and that they suffer misfortunes and problems that burden them. Although they long for communication and closeness to others, they have emotional fluctuations. Their tendency toward isolation kills their distance from others or distances others from them, and those around them often feel guilty for their inability to help them. After knowing in detail the destructive patterns of the 10 years, we now show how to confront them wisely, how to confront destructive patterns. The writer here means the wise part of your personality that can control and overcome destructive patterns. It embodies the part of your brain that helps you grow and develop. Do you remember your ally's death? Al-Hakim has five techniques that he can use to move your life forward in a positive way. These techniques are empathy, exploration, innovating, directing, implementing well, and investing in all of these skills will help yourself improve in all aspects of your life, such as solving problems or achieving growth in any other area. The first technique, empathy first, to remove the confusion about the meaning of empathy intended here, people often confuse two concepts when they hear the word empathy, which can lead to misuse of both skills. The first concept, Sam Patty, comes in the sense of pity, that is, feeling bad for someone who has been involved in an accident or trauma. The second concept, Empathy, is mentioned in this book. Empathy refers to feeling and understanding another person's emotions, that is, putting yourself in their shoes and trying to see things from their point of view. Empathy provides the emotional context for understanding what a person is feeling and what might motivate their behavior. IT is possible and even helpful to empathize with someone you disagree with, and this empathy can open the door to communication that can help correct the other person's negative behavior. This concept, or patty, is what is meant by empathy in most books. This technique enables the sage to offer gratitude, acceptance, and kindness to you and others. Compassion is of great importance when you or someone else feels pain or fatigue. It simply heals and replenishes your energy so you can continue. 
This skill combats the insistence that appears from the critic as he tries to convince you that you or others are not trying hard enough. When you practice compassion, you feel a physiological response that helps your body rest by lowering its stress response, which in turn helps you relax. But it's important to avoid falling into the trap of toxic empathy, which is the tendency to be overly empathic with others, to the point that their needs and problems are a priority in your life. This may fuel a bitter saboteur pattern that can negatively affect your thinking and behavior. So striking a balance between compassion for others and yourself and respecting your needs is the way to avoid this trap and maintain your psychological stability. To practice empathy, the writer advises that you be open to new points of view and listen to others without making judgments at first. Likewise, reading about people different from you opens horizons, visions, and points of view, as some research indicates that reading novels and literature are general qualities that enhance empathy and emotional intelligence. The second technique is exploration. Through exploration, you can use your natural curiosity to discover new ideas or solutions to problems. This technique is most effective when you need a solution, but you need to understand the problem better first. Many of us resist exploration because we focus on moving on or on responding to other people's arguments, and therefore we don't think about how to re-examine what we see in the moment. If you already think you know where it's going because you're used to it, or if you're just trying to win it in a discussion, you will only focus on information that supports your point of view, rather, than understanding every aspect of the situation. Or, you listen neutrally to the other person's point of view, so you won't explore to discover alternative insights and viewpoints. T.O. make effective use of this technique to overcome internal sabotaging patterns, a writer suggests. For example, when exploring every difficult situation, try to leave your feelings aside and be a person whose only goal is. In that moment, it is learning without judging what you learn. They did this to confront the inner critic who tends to to only pay attention to information that supports your point of view, you will also counteract the influences of other saboteurs, such as the hyper-rationalist who directs you to ignore the feelings of others, or the victim-oriented person who directs you to view others' opinions as a personal attack. The third technology, innovation. This technology allows you to create new and unexpected ideas and solutions to solve a conflict or problem without judgment or biases being an obstacle to you. It's about generating as many new ideas as possible without evaluating them at all. This technique is at its peak when you find yourself facing a situation where the old way of dealing with things is no longer effective. You need to adopt a new tactic. But preventing the evaluation and judgment of ideas as soon as they appear is difficult because the inner critic saboteur wants to evaluate every idea, which makes us view ideas more positively if they are similar to the ideas we are familiar with, and this makes us close to more innovative ideas that could improve our methods. Current significantly, when we evaluate ideas as they arise, a negative inner voice can prevent us from realizing truly great ideas. Inner saboteurs often decide that an idea is impractical, too difficult, or not worth considering, and thus we remain trapped in our preconceptions and old patterns of thinking and doing. We cannot come up with a new and innovative solution. Using innovation technology to overcome disruptive patterns, a writer communicates that, as soon as an idea comes up from you or someone else, say yes, this is what I like about this idea, and then share the next idea. This approach encourages you to recognize each idea and express appreciation for it before moving on to the next idea. At the same time, it prevents the flow of negative comments. 
which may come with sentences that begin with not or but. The fourth technique, guidance, helps you choose your steps when there are many options available and you are not sure which ones. The best way to do this is to use this technique to evaluate the different options available to you and make a decision based on your personal values. These values become your guiding tool, and the more you use this tool, the more you will strengthen your value and use it more effectively to guide your actions in the direction of the better. To use this technique most effectively, you must be in touch with your personal worth, which can be difficult when your inner saboteurs try to add false values. For example, Adi, the hyper-rational type try to push you down paths that look better on a resume, but don't. Emotionally possessive, the checker type may try to push you down a path that leaves the least room for error. Even when these mistakes can be useful in awaken the giant within, Tony Robbins explains that understanding our values can be difficult because many of them developed without a shepherd, many of them created by the social shaping of parents, teachers, and peers. So many current values relate more to behaviors for which you received rewards in the past. Instead of principles that are important to you personally, this opens the door for your internal directors to influence your values by linking them to others' perceptions of you. Harbour agrees that there are two types of values, goals or values that are linked to desired future results, and means or values that are linked to ways of achieving desired results. He stresses that you should be aware of the differences between these two values and avoid focusing exclusively on the means because you will risk losing sight of what you want to achieve in the end. For example, if the ultimate value you want to achieve is enhanced self-confidence, you may decide to pursue this through a means such as exercise, focusing on the value of physical health. However, if you are overly obsessed with the belief that you should change your physical appearance, this view may undermine your self-confidence. Fifth Technique Implementation This technique allows you to take action without interference from internal sabotaging patterns. It is the tactic you should use once you have clearly defined the path you should take and allow yourself to do what is right calmly and without emotional attachment to the outcome. All of your scammers try to interfere with your execution skills, use their reservations to make Cato waste your time and energy, limit your options, and lose track of what is best for you. To benefit from the skill of implementation, the author suggests anticipating in advance the ways in which your internal saboteurs will try to interfere with your steps. For example, an avoidant might tell you that the new sales technique you've put together isn't working. Once you think about the different lies an avoidant might tell you that are all preventing you from getting started, it will be easier to confront them. And disassemble it when it appears later. Positive IQ is your general ability to maintain the dominance of your inner sage and contain the influence of your mind. Form your positive IQ. Where 100% indicates that the wise person is always in control and your mind is always working for you, while 1% means that your mind is always working for you. Although a score of 59% indicates that your mind works in your favor most of the time. However, Shaw Men's experiment showed that any result below the rate of 75% means that the effect of Mucker Bay is still greater than the effect of the Hakim, and this indicates that the negative effects of the warrior types are three times stronger than the positive effects of the Hakim. The author calculated that only 20% of people have a positive IQ of 75% or higher. It is the reason why the influence of internal destructive patterns is greater than that of wisdom. It may be a result of humans' bias toward negativity. This means that we as humans tend to focus and pay attention to negative things more than positive ones. 
This bias is useful when we need to detect real and present threats, but it can be apparent when it makes us constantly think about the sources of stress in our lives. Given that it is not possible to eliminate the sources of stress in our lives, overcoming the impact of this bias towards negativity requires that we consciously focus on positive matters and address them in a deeper and more detailed manner. This means that we must actively care and focus on positive things and give them more time and attention than negative things. By doing this, positive things can influence our minds more than negative ones. The first step to increasing your positive IQ is understanding patterns such as destructive internalization because they develop your thinking and behavior in unhelpful ways. The second step is to consciously tap into the powers of the inner sage. Finally, my friend, we offer you this simple exercise to identify the destructive pattern that dominates you and to confront it. To begin, we must take into account a variety of patterns of saboteurs and determine which of them may have a greater presence in our thinking. If you feel that you are always criticizing, this may be the result of the influence of the criticizer or auditor. And if you regularly find yourself distracted, maybe those inner voices are speaking to you through an avoidant after this, or by exploring how this disruptive pattern affects your thinking and behavior, how does it limit your ability to act freely? Think about a decision you recently made or thought you made as a result of the influence of this saboteur on you. Then, how would things be different? If you follow the time-honored thinking of the sage. Finally, make a solid plan to confront this sabotaging pattern. When negative situations try to influence you, can you think about how to deal with them effectively? What do you think about transcending his influence? Can you activate Hakeem? What helps you combat this negative impact? Look at the sabotaging pattern from a wiser, more strategic perspective and talk to yourself in a calming and guiding manner. By considering these ideas and tapping into the power of Sage, K, you can enhance your ability to overcome this saboteur and achieve greater successes in thinking and behavior. I wish you all success and may you always be wonderful.